Hello everyone, welcome to another Exchange 2013-2019 Coexistence video. My name's Ed. And in this video we're going to be looking at uh, part 8 of 18, uh, broken up into five different parts. Uh, and in this part we're going to look at it doing the PowerShell prerequisites for Exchange 2019. Now, for those that are familiar with Exchange 2019, you know that you don't have to do this because it, it can be done from the installation itself. But for those that are new to this, um, I prefer um, basically running this. Uh, I'm old school like that. And once the PowerShell prerequisites are in place, obviously we'll need to reboot and then we can move along. So I actually went to the uh, website here to show you because I had to download all the stuff. And <clears throat> you'll see that if you're installing 2019 on server 2019, which is the only OS that supported, you need .NET 4.8, you need the Visual C++ binaries 2012 and 2013, you need the UCMA runtime components. Now, obviously, this is required, but because we are installing this using the desktop experience, you can see that that there is already t selected so I'm not going to install it twice so this is what we copied now to start with off with so if I click on start and launch PowerShell as administrator and then copy this you can now start with the installation let me just make it bigger so this will basically go and install everything that we've now chosen or told it to install from this notepad. Uh, if you want to copy it straight from the website here, you can just click copy over here and then you can paste it straight into your PowerShell window. Now obviously um, I don't want to do too many things at once uh, because it does require reboots. So <clears throat> the installation here is pretty quick. Um, I haven't seen a slow 2019 server to be honest with you. I mean, even this one that's running, it's running 16 or 32 gigs of RAM. It's like very, very little, but it's only for lab purposes and for demos, etc. So you can imagine if you're sitting with a server that's got 256 gigs of RAM or 128 gigs, it's going to be quick. So I'm not going to keep you much longer. Once this is done, I'm going to reboot and then I'll come back to. Um, still part 8 but the next section should be part B uh, which will be doing .NET 4.8 so I'll see you in the next section thanks very much for watching